Hello everyone. Myself Abhinay Anand. I am a student of MBBS 2017 batch from Institute of Medical Sciences, Banaras Hindu University. So today we are going to make a video and the topic for this video, this video is how to approach your first semester examination. So there are many students out there who are going to give the first, uh, I can say a big exam of MBBS which is your first semester examination which is probably going to happen in January and February of the year. So in first semester examination you have three subjects, anatomy, biochemistry and physiology. So in the examinations you are going to have both theory as well as practical and uh, you require at least 50% marks in both theory as well as practical separately to pass your examination. And uh, I'm pretty sure that in all the universities across the country, some weightage is given to the internal assessment, this semester examination, which you are going to give. In BHU, 20% weightage is given to the internal assessment of which this semester also forms a part. So now let us discuss how you should approach, how you should prepare for your semester examination. For this purpose, we have looked at the question paper of the semester examination of various colleges throughout the country. So we have come up uh, with a common approach, which almost everyone of you can follow. So first, let us have some general discussion about all the subjects. So in all the subjects, the thing which you are going to expect this year is a change of pattern of the question paper. Why I'm telling this? Because from this year, the entire MBBS curriculum has been revised. So you can definitely expect some change in pattern of your question paper. You can expect more clinical question because at our times when we gave the semester examination, the questions were direct, like they were ask asking to write short notes or some definitions like that. However, now the approach can be slightly shifted towards the clinical point of view. So I'll suggest you that whenever you read any book, try to follow the clinical points, try to understand the use of that topic in your clinics. Next thing, read your textbook from the beginning of the session. Don't think that you can read your entire textbook just one week, two week or even one month before the examination. In order to read, understand and remember whatever you have read in your textbook, you need to read it from the beginning of the session itself. And if you are not reading textbook, if you are reading some other book, then also stick to only one source. I'm repeating stick to only one source. Don't change your source after uh, every few days because what happens when we revise 100 things 10 times, it is more helpful than revising 1000 things once. Okay, so if you revise the same notes or the same book again and again, you will be able to remember those things, recall those things when you write the answer. However, if you look at various sources now and then, then you will not be able to gain the concept or uh, remember them properly. Okay, so my suggestion will be always stick to one source of study. Next, one thing which might not be much reliable this year is previous year question paper. But still, I will suggest you that go through the previous year question paper of your university because it is highly likely that few questions might be repeated. However, clinical question will be more this year. So you may expect a change of pattern. Next thing, talk to your seniors, talk to your teachers. They are going to give you an idea about what changes might be there because they have read the subject, complete subject. So they might be knowing that even if there is a change of pattern, what more things or what new things you can expect. Next, again I'm telling, give more emphasis on practical knowledge. A very good example I'll give, like uh, in anatomy you have the topic of paralysis, okay. So previously a short note was directly given that I write a short note on of paralysis like that. However, this year a figure of policeman's tip hand might be given in the question paper. Then they may ask you to identify the condition, what is the cause, what are the clinical features, something like that. Or in other way how the question can be presented, they may give you the clinical picture and they can ask you that what is the uh, syndrome, what is the cause, something like that. So you should be prepared for the entire subject thoroughly because the question can come in any way. Subject wise discussion. So the first subject which we are going to discuss is anatomy. So first let us come to the anatomy theory paper and for anatomy theory paper, the only book will I'll suggest you is B.D. Chaurasia. Even if you are reading Vishram Singh or Gray's Anatomy, it is okay. But I have personally read B.D. Chaurasia and I'll suggest you that. Why? Because in B.D. Chaurasia, all the topics are given separately, under separate headings. So it is uh, means easy to remember. 
Also, the diagrams given in video Theresia are quite easy to make. So I'll suggest you that go through the diagrams thoroughly because as I've already told you, diagram based questions might be given or even if it is not given, then in anatomy, you are expected to make diagrams wherever it is possible. So go through the diagrams thoroughly. The tables given in about muscle origin, insertion, nerve supply, you should go through them because sometimes the question is directly asked right about the muscles of the foot like that question can come. So you should be thorough with the tables. Don't go through the entire text, go through the table. Remember the key points. Okay. Then next the clinical boxes. In every topic, you will get some clinical boxes, which you might not be able to understand, but it is expected from you that you have to remember that because that might come in the exam. And if you give some effort, then you will be able to understand also very easily. There is nothing much hard in that. Okay. So this is for anatomy and then in anatomy, we have seen the papers of various colleges. There you can get long question of 20 marks, 10 marks, 5 marks, or you can get a single question of 10 marks, which might be subdivided into 2 marks, 3 marks, 2 marks like that. So I'll suggest what you look at the marks and write the answers accordingly, because it is not wise to leave any question. Even if you don't know the answer, you should never leave a question in your examination. Okay. So manage your time in such a way that you are able to complete all the uh, questions. Now coming to the practical examination. So practical examination, what things you have not read in theory, you have not read the bones for theory. You have not read the x-rays for theory. You have not read the surface marking. So these three are the extra things which you will have to prepare for your practical examination, which you have not read for theory. Other than these, most of the things which you have read in the theory examination, they are only going to be asked there in the practical also, such as identification of the nerves, arteries, muscles, like that. Okay. So you have to uh, go through them. So now how you will go through them? The best answer is by watching the dissection in your dissection hall of the college. That is the best method. Even if you are not doing the dissection yourself, at least you should look what structures are present in what relation they are to other structures. Or if that is not possible, you can go through Netter's Atlas. That is also very good. Or else you have a source YouTube on which videos are available for almost everything, all the topics of anatomy. So you can go through them. Other than this, the topics which uh, many people ignore are embryology and histology. So I'll suggest please don't ignore because from embryology, you can expect one question of five marks to come in your examination. And the questions are very simple, like uh, 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 gametogenesis or the placenta or development of heart. So like this, a question might come for five to 10 marks in your exam. Similarly, histology will definitely come in your practical examination. Spotting are there for histology, even master slide might be given. Viva may also be there depending upon the colleges. So I'll suggest you to go through histology also. So this was about anatomy. Now coming to physiology. So for first physiology also we come for theory. So for theory, the books which most of you might be reading are CL, uh, sorry, uh, Ganong and Guyton. So whatever book you are reading, I'll suggest you read that only. Okay. Uh, and other than that, some guidebooks are also available. So if you are not comfortable with those books, you can take help of the guidebooks. It is upon you. Now in that also, uh, there, is, there will be theory questions. So in the theory question, you try to answer them point wise in the form of flow charts, tables and diagrams. Why? Because in physiology, in most of the colleges, the answers ex are expected uh, to the point. So for being to the point, you answer them in the form of a flow chart or table or diagram. Okay because these are very to the point question like you might be asked uh, coagulation pathway so extrinsic pathway intrinsic pathway you make a flow chart that's it nothing else you need to write there okay then uh, 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 the marks so in physiology maximum marks for a question are eight or maximum ten more than that no college gives a long question for more than that okay so you uh, answer those question in that way only like 10 mark question answer in two to three pages like write the relevant point make the diagram take the help of diagram in both anatomy as well as physiology because they have a good impression on the teacher and you can or you'll also be able to present your uh, means the answer more uh, in a better way with the help of the diagrams now coming to the practical so physiology practical might vary from college to college but the some of the common things are such as the experiments on frog heart experiments on frog heart might not be performed in the college but i think it is taught everywhere and spotting question or even viva question might be asked from that so for that 
you have to read what, what are the effect of drugs or electrical stimulation on frog's heart. Similarly, there are uh, hematology practicals in which you will have to make a blood smear, uh, TLC, DLC, clotting time, bleeding time, blood grouping. So all these things are given as practical questions. Along with that, in some colleges, uh, physical examination of human patients might have been done or might not have been done. So if that is there, there are basically four systems, the central nervous system, the uh, respiratory system, cardiovascular system and the abdomen. So the examination might have been taught in your colleges and uh, uh, it might come in your practical. Even if not now, then in your final, final exam, it is definitely going to come. Now coming to the book. So uh, as per my personal experience, I have read CL Ghai, which is a practical book for physiology. So you can refer to that. It is a good book in which all the topics have been explained quite nicely. So you can refer to that. So coming to the last and the third subject, biochemistry. So in biochemistry also similarly theory and practical. So in theory, you might have seen the chapters in biochemistry are quite familiar like proteins, carbohydrates, although some extra points are there, but the chapters you have read, already you have read, new things are there, but they are also given as you know, whatever book you are reading, in that they are giving in the form of flowchart. In all the books almost flowcharts are given. So I'll suggest go to go through the flowchart because those flowcharts are quite quite helpful. And from now onwards, as I have said, clinical questions will be there. So you read the clinical question given at the end of the chapter because they uh, are very important from this year onwards because they are going to ask everything from clinical point of view like uh, uh, hyperproteinemia uh, may be there or protein urea may be there, they may ask what are the causes uh, and all these things, okay. So go through the books carefully from this year and try to read them from clinical point of view. The chapters, I am again saying you have read the chapters, so you just need to put some amount of effort. And in some colleges, the chapters such as vitamins or uh, DNA, nucleotide, transcription might have been covered. So those chapters are very, very similar to what you have read in class 12. So even if you go through, you, you remember the class 12 uh, things properly, then you can easily solve those questions which will come in the examination. So this was about biochemistry theory. Now in practical, spotting might be there in which instruments related to biochemical examination might be given such as pipette and all. So you have to identify those. Along with that, there are qualitative as well as quantitative examinations. So qualitative and quantitative examination mostly comes for proteins and sugars. So that you have to perform and along with that urine examination might be there in which ketone bodies, blood, glucose, protein etc. may be present in the urine sample which you will have to analyze with the help of various tests. And then for the viva in physiology as well as biochemistry, you just have to remember what you have read for the theory examination because viva questions are also asked from that only. And in all the students of all the colleges, I'll advise you one thing, go through your semester question paper before going to the viva because teachers have a tendency to ask the questions which were there in your semester examination question paper because they would like to see that even if you did not know during, during your theory, have you read that after going back home or not? Okay, so always go through your question paper. So summarizing all the points, the only thing which is important for you, stick to a single source, whatever you have read from the beginning, read that only. Go through the important topics, but from the, for this year, I'll suggest that you read everything because for you are, as I've said, you are the first ones to give examination in the new pattern. So I'll suggest you read the books carefully, prepare the answer, uh, prepare the chapter in the form of clinical points that what are the relevant clinical points, what question might come. And from this year, I think you are having your clinical postings from the first year itself. So when you go to the hospital there, whatever you are being taught, try to remember that because the application might be asked in your examination. So this was a video for all the first semester exam going students. All the very best for examinations. Thank you.